Oh, hello, this is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, well, first let me apologize that I still have my sunglasses on uh, to conceal my pink eye, but I'm definitely getting better. Uh, I should be getting rid of them pretty soon. Uh, earlier the, this month, I produced a video uh, to show that uh, another function of uh, the wok, which is to bake bread in the oven. In this case, I use my Cucina 14-inch standard steel wok. And later on, uh, somebody wrote me uh, and asked me, is it possible to bake bread in the large 14-inch cast iron wok? Uh, my answer is, of course, and I think it actually would be better to bake it in the large uh, cast iron wok because the cast iron wok has better heat holding capacity. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to use the same bread template for the other video, uh, but I'm going to bake this into a rosemary bread. Okay, let's go into the kitchen and see what we could do. I use bread flour for baking this bread, and I got this 25 pound bag of bread flour from a Sims Club. Uh, and this is amazing because this whole bag of flour is only about $7. Uh, I store my flour uh, in this jar, which actually my son used to uh, have protein mix in it. Uh, I also got this uh, yeast from Sam's Club. It comes in a one pound package and uh, two units for only about $6. Uh, after I opened the package, uh, I transferred them into a plastic container and store them in the refrigerator. Uh, the other unusual ingredients that I need in making this bread is some uh, rosemary leaf. Uh, I purchased them in a large size bottle. Uh, to make this bread, I'm going to use a three and a half cup of uh, bread flour. I have used different kinds of uh, flour before. For example, uh, in the beginning, I used all-purpose flour, but the bread uh, does not rise as well. Uh, at times, I will uh, mix the flour uh, with wheat flours, uh, but again, uh, most of the time, I just use bread flour. Uh, next, I add the yeast mixture to the flour. Uh, I normally use about one tablespoon of yeast uh, to one cup of flour. Uh, I will use a larger quantity if the yeast has been sitting in the refrigerator for a while. Uh, next, I add uh, sugar to the flour mixture. Uh, again, I use about uh, one tablespoon of sugar for one cup of flour. Uh, sometimes I use more, and uh, all depending on how I want the bread to be. Uh, and then I add salt to the flour mixture. Generally, I use about half teaspoon of salt per one cup of flour. I normally use about uh, one egg to two cups of uh, flour. So for this particular batch of flour, I'm going to use two eggs. I then add two cups of uh, hot water, uh, about the temperature of uh, tap hot water, and then I beat it up uh, before I add it to the flour mixture. And next, I'm going to add the rosemary leaves uh, to the flour mixture. Uh, you can add as much or as little you like. It's not critical. Uh, I then use a spatula to mix all the contents uh, in the flour mixture uh, before I add the uh, egg uh, solution to the flour. Uh, I add the egg solution a little bit at a time while I am mixing everything into it. Because I want to keep a close eye on uh, how much moisture that I'm going to add. Since I'm not going to measure it precisely, uh, instead I'm looking at the texture that I would like to achieve. Uh, I would like to have 90% of the flour uh, being uh, wet by the uh, egg solution, with only 10% remain uh, dry. From my past experience, I realized that this is probably uh, the best uh, uh, texture that I would like to have, and it will achieve the greatest uh, uh, level of uh, rice uh, during proving. So okay, now I'm ready to have my uh, stand mixer to knit the dough. So the first thing is for me to, ins to install the dough hook. Uh, I have a kitchen aid stand mixer. Uh, one great feature about this stand mixer is that you lift the bowl up while it is being used in mixing. Uh, this feature is very important because during the uh, mi mixing, uh, the bowl will remain flexible and it will not affect the stand. I have a uh, high-capacity mixer stand, 
which is really important because uh, if you want to knit uh, anything more than three or four cups of dough, uh, you require a powerful stand mixer. Uh, the other type of uh, KitchenAid stand mixer uh, involves the bowl being set uh, permanently or fixed uh, on the bottom of the mixer. And uh, in that case, uh, sometimes uh, actually the mixing is so powerful, it causes the mixer to move around on the table. I would like to call it the walking mixer. Quite often I'm afraid that my uh, mixer is going to walk off the uh, kitchen counter onto the floor. So as you can see now, the uh, flour has uh, pretty much uh, come together to form this nice dough. Uh, one important characteristic I always observe is that uh, if you, you know that you have the right amount of uh, fluid uh, when the dough actually cleaning the bowl for you. Uh, over the years, uh, I find that one of the most important secrets uh, of uh, baking is that to make sure your dough is not too dry or too wet. Uh, which I'm not going to show you in this particular example because uh, my fluids uh, appear to be just perfectly right. Uh, in the other situations, uh, I will either add more flour or add more uh, fluid to the mixing bowl to make sure the, uh, the right consistency is uh, achieved. Uh, I knit the dough for about 10 minutes and now it is ready. So I'm going to uh, shut it off and uh, to remove the um, dough from the mixer. So okay, uh, now the dough is ready. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to take it over to the kitchen counter and I'm going to form the bowl into a ball. I'm going to bake this bread uh, in my 14 inch large cast iron wok. However, I'm going to prove this bread in the wok as well. Uh, so before I put the bread in it, I spray it with oil uh, to give it a uh, non-coating surface to make sure the bread will not stick to it. Uh, and then I put the wok with the dough into uh, my uh, stove. And on the, my stove has a proof setting. So I'm going to set it uh, for uh, 45 minutes uh, for the proofing. As you can tell, 45 minutes later, when I look at the dough, it has risen significantly. So now it is ready to be baked. I want to bake it directly uh, in the wok. Uh, so what I'm going to do is that now I set the temperature to 380 degrees and set the timer for 30 minutes. Uh, I discovered that it is not necessary for me to preheat the oven. Uh, I realized that in some type of baking, preheating the oven is essential. But for this, it doesn't seem to matter. And when I come back 30 minutes later, the bread has been baked and it looked real good. I put it on top of the stove top and uh, I have to be very careful because the wok is still very hot. Uh, when it is cool, uh, the first thing I did is that I divided the bread into uh, four quarters. Uh, I kept half of the bread and I gave the other half uh, to one of my friends. I then sliced the bread as I would uh, with a regular loaf of bread. As I slice the bread, I can feel the rosemary aroma fills the room. Uh, over the years, I have tried many bread knives. Uh, I find the ceramic bread knife works the best. Uh, this bread uh, makes an excellent toast. Uh, the other night, we uh, used this bread to go with our cream of cauliflower soup. Uh, here I receive a picture from my friend. Uh, he used the bread to make a nice sandwich. Uh, this bread is baked uh, according to a template. Uh, I call it a template because I can make uh, modifications and adjustments to create many different kinds of bread. Uh, for example, last time I baked a cranberry walnut bread, but this time I baked a rosemary bread. Uh, both times I use exactly the same template. Uh, the wonderful thing about a template is that once I understand what are the critical steps, uh, I'm free to make modifications of the steps that are non-essential that give me much greater flexibility. Uh, I must uh, uh, say that uh, bread actually baked with the cast iron wok uh, seems to be turned out a little bit better. It brown uh, better than the one that is being baked in the standard steel wok. Uh, however, I don't use it too often for stir fry uh, because it is too heavy and it is difficult to move around. Uh, for stir fry, I prefer my uh, Cucina 14 inch standard steel wok because it is much lighter. Now, for the purpose of stir fry, the heat holding capacity is not that 
important as in the case of baking. Uh, the Cucina 14 inch stand steel wok uh, does as good a job as the large wok. Uh, however, I would not give up my large 14 inch cast iron wok uh, because it's great for uh, this particular purpose, such as baking in the oven. Uh, so I don't think it's unreasonable uh, for people to have uh, two walks. Uh, I know that my wife always said to me, you have way too many walks, which actually I do. Uh, but if I'm going to have only two cooking utensils, then I will have a stainless steel wok and a cast iron wok. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please uh, like, subscribe and share. I'll see you next time.